welcome to another exclusive Collider Sundance interview brought to you by Kia Telluride. Huge thanks to them for making this happen because it means we get to share with you cool Sundance movies like The Wolf Hour. Thank you so much to the three of you for being here. Alistair, I wanted to start with you first. It's been a little while since your last film, so I was wondering if you could paint a picture of the journey from that one to what we get in The Wolf Hour. Uh, I mean, funny enough, the film kind of chronicles a little bit of my journey in a in a loose, loosely based way but um you know i i i uh was not not working that whole time i think um i was just really not finding the right project to to land and then i had a few projects that you know didn't quite make it and you know next thing you know it's been a little bit a minute well, sometimes it's just meant to be and yeah, sure. to fall into place as it does. Um, a lot of people out there do not know what the Wolf Hour is about yet, so I will leave it to whoever would like to do it. Does anybody want to give a brief synopsis of the movie? Um, <laughs> okay. uh, uh, the Wolf Hour follows um, uh, a character, June, June Lee, who um, is a recluse living on the top floor of her tenement building in the South Bronx in 1977 and um, is clearly uh, a bit off the grid and um, uh, struggling to, to just get the basic necessities of her life, life uh, going. And, and um, one morning, uh, someone starts ringing her bell incessantly, and uh, she doesn't seem to be able to go down to see who it is. It's a, it's a creepy touch to it. I feel like anybody could sit there and picture their apartment alarm going off like that, the buzzer going off, and it just keeps you awake at night. Um, there's also this feeling that, you know, even when the movie takes place compared to now in modern times, really the darkness around us can kind of consume us and make us a little reclusive and, and stuck in ourselves. So I was wondering, is there anything that the three of you turn to to kind of get through tougher times just as a source of inspiration for anybody watching this? Um, really, for me, I was looking at, um, I mean, I think and everyone has, experienced a level of depression or anxiety over certain periods of their lives this was obviously a very heightened um, version of that and um, she's built a really good case for why it works for her not to go out and interact with the rest of the world um, apart from the fact that the killer you know this the Sam aspect son of the Sam, son of Sam um, there's many other things. She's done damage to her family structure and um, and doesn't want to damage any more people and herself included. Um, so, yeah, I just did research on depression. Um, I don't have that reclusive thing. I, my depression <laughs> manifests in different ways when I experience it. I kind of want to escape and like rely on and connect with other people. Um, but I can relate to that loss of relevance, that feeling of, you know, where you're filled with self-doubt and self-loathing, and um, your art d is is no longer relevant, and you and you know, but you have to keep creating. And how do you keep doing that when you're getting blocked over and over again? I think that's something that's really human. Well, for anyone who is in a tough spot out there, hopefully they have a character like yours to turn to who will at least step in and try to help. So is there anyone in your life that you turn to when you kind of need someone to give you a little boost? Oh, um, yes. My my husband, my mother, my, my children, my puppy. <laughs> 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 um, not necessarily in that order, but um, yes, absolutely. I feel very, I feel very fortunate. But um, yes, people, I, I think when people can become isolated and it can become so hard to break through uh, and and to leave the loneliness. There's only one thing that could take me away from talking about movies and it's bringing up a puppy, but I'm gonna control <laughs> myself right now. I wanna ask a little bit about the casting process because obviously you've surrounded yourself with a great ensemble here and I was curious for the lead role in particular, how exactly does that happen? Do you make a list and put Naomi's name at the very top of it and keep your fingers crossed? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Naomi's on the top most people's list, I would assume, but um, the uh, yeah, I got really lucky that uh, she connected with the script and and invited me to have coffee with her, and we just had a really magical afternoon talking about the character and where it was headed, and uh, it just felt like the most natural thing for me, and and, and hopefully for her too, and and uh, you know, we just set off down the path. 
It's as simple as that. You have a very, very extensive career with a lot of different kinds of films. And because we're at Sundance right now, a festival that can really make a difference for certain artists and really kind of change the industry, I just wanted to get your sense of how you choose projects, especially when we're talking about some smaller movies that need to make waves at a festival versus a big studio blockbuster project. Yeah, it's never that calculated. I just, I mean... I, I think for the most part, I'm looking for a character that's going to move me, that's going to teach me something in my own spiritual growth in some way. It just lifts off the page, and sometimes it can be just a scene uh, um, that makes you go, wow, this this is the whole part, and this is why I have to do it. Um, sometimes it becomes clearer later. Um, and um, I think we're just always looking for growth um, as, a, as an artist to try new things. And, you know, it depends what you've done previously and, um, you know, it makes, makes a good argument for trying something the opposite mm -hmm. of what you've just experienced. Is there a piece of this character you're going to take with you? Um, <laughs> I like <laughs> to let them go, to be honest. <laughs> Some, sometimes, actually, physical things and, and, the, and the accent... Um, it, the hard things to break actually um, because you study the accent so much and um, and American accents are not my comfort zone at all um, so when you study and you change your vowel shapes and things like that and walk the way the way you walk and hold your body yeah you, that, those are the things you have to really shake off so from this project to a really really big project a little something called Game of Thrones we have many viewers out there who are huge huge fans so was there kind of that connective element to the character you're going to play there that really drew you to that? <laughs> um, I can't really talk about the character. All I can say is that um, the show, um, the brand, that everything that um, Game of Thrones sets out to achieve, it does in such a terrific way. And it's just a great group of people to be involved with. It is a whole new um, group of people that said um, it's very connected, obviously, to the same... Um, author and um, and I'm just super thrilled. It'll Is be it a blind trust job. in the brand, or do you get all the information? I got beforehand? a lot. I I'm not going to go. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not going to get no myself in trouble. No, no specifics, but of course. Yeah. It's a very exciting yeah. thing to have coming up, and so yeah, is this super. as well. So I will remind you all. The Wolf Hour, keep an eye out for it. A huge congratulations to you all. Thank you for thank being you. here. So much. Another thank you for Kia Telluride for making all of this happen. Like and share this interview. We will see you soon with more Sundance coverage.